Hello, my marvellous sausages. Now, the Spire of the Watcher dungeon is a good dungeon because the first encounter that you come to doesn't have any major bosses, and it's something that you can farm for some really good loot. But not only is it something you can farm, it's something you can do solo. So what I'm going to show you in this video, how I've managed to farm this solo in order to try and get the goodies. Now, I haven't been very successful in getting everything that I want, but it is farmable, so you can get it. Now, on this first encounter, you've got a chance to have the Terminus Horizon machine gun, which is very good, and also the Seventh Seraph carbine. People don't really like that too much, and I can understand why, because we were only earning it last season in Dares of Eternity. But you can get the Long Arm Legendary Scout Rifle, which people are comparing to the Dead Man's Tail, which is excellent, considering it's only in a Legendary slot. But that's not the best thing about this encounter. You can farm it for the arms, the legs, and what we all want is a lovely cowboy hat, so you can get that to drop from this encounter as well. Now, I want to go over builds here, because I'm using my Titan to get this done, and the sole reason I'm using my Titan to get this done is because of survivability. You see, you're going to take a lot of fire from lots of sources, so you want to be able to stay hanging on in there as long as possible. Now, I'm not a brilliant player, I'm an average player, as you all can attest, but I'm sure most of us are all average players as well, and so this build will really help you get through to the end. Now, for my build, let me show you what I've got here. Now, I'm going for Solar Titan, of course, because this works in tandem with this. This is the exotic I've chosen, the Alori Splendor Helm. This is everything that you need for survivability. When you're on really low health, you'll plop out a sunspot, which triggers restoration. Or, if you want to manually trigger restoration, you can stick down a barricade, and it'll happen there as well, because that plops down a sunspot. Now, because I've got up 100 resilience here, that means the uh, I've got massive damage reduction plus being a titan it also reduces the cooldown of my barricade so uh, they'll be coming up pretty quickly so i can slap them down whenever i'm in trouble and of course then going back to barricades your fastest charging barricade is the rally barricade so make sure you've got that you can use it to hide behind of course but what it's here primarily for is to trigger restoration because of the laurel east blender helm excellent stuff next we've got a stray flift with the jumps jumping is very important now then with the jumps with this, I want directional control, which is very, very handy. But I also take another exotic in with me because my jumping skills with my Titan aren't great. I'm a Warlock main, I suppose you could say. So I know how to jump with the Warlock. With the Titan, make sure you've got a pair of Lion Rampants. They are invaluable in getting around the little nooks and crannies, especially when you want to get some of these secret chests that are around the place before this first encounter. Well, there's one anyway. But there is a jumping section that you need to get through and this will really save your bacon. I can't recommend this enough. And what you do is change between these two whenever you need to, but I'll show you in the vid exactly when the best time is to change you toes. Now for our melee of course we've got our throwing hammer because what's great about this is when you bung your hammer you're going to be smacking people in the face and killing them which is going to trigger elemental well drops which is very very handy but also if the hammer struck a target picking it up grants cure so it's another way to get your health back okay really really useful and then finally I've gone for healing grenade too another backup just in case you find yourself almost dying throw the healing grenade at the floor and then you'll get your your restoration up as well. It is so useful to have all these things because strength-wise, you're going to be dealing kick-ins no problem at all in regard to your weapons. Get as much health help as you can. Aspects-wise, I've gone for Roaring Flames for final blows of solar abilities. Increase the damage of your solar abilities. Always very, very handy. And while Roaring Flames is active, you scorch targets. And then we've got Solar Invictus. Solar ability, final blows, hammer of scorched impacts, and scorched targets create sunspots, which is excellent. Sunspots apply so Scorch and also deal damage, and entering a sunspot yourself applies restoration. So you're running around from sunspot to sunspot, getting recharged while it kills the gits all around you. This is so useful. Fragments wise, I've gone for anything to create scorch and to generate scorch. So your class ability recharges faster when you scorch targets, which you're going to be doing a lot of. I've gone for Ember of Empyrean Soul and Weapon or Ability Final Blows extend the duration of restoration and radiant effects applies to you. We've lost 10 in resilience there, but we've made that up you can see in the build 
Uh, we've got Ember of Tempering here. Solar Weapon. Final Blows grant you and your allies increased recovery for a short duration. Stacks three times. Very, very useful. And then finally, we've got Ember of Solace. Radiant and Restoration effects apply to you. Have increased duration. So a nice healing build we've got here. Now, moving on to weapons. First of all, use the Arbalist. It is so useful because we've got these Hydras who float off at a distance who can pummel and kill you really quickly. This is perfect for taking them out. Three precision shots will completely kill them or a few body shots and the odd precision will kill them as well because they're so important to kill. Make sure you've got an Arbalist with you. If you don't have an Arbalist, maybe some form of linear fusion would help or a good sniper if you're good with the sniper too but I would recommend that there. Then for my energy weapon, I've gone for the Callus Mini Tool with Incandescent on it because it spreads Scorched and Scorched is very, very useful but there are some long range range targets we're going to need to take out as well which this is not that good for so I bring along either a nice bow perhaps or what I've got here is a scout rifle my staccato 46 very handy for killing gits at a distance that's got incandescent on it too and then finally for your heavy weapon it is kind of up to you I did run this for a little while the cry mutiny which is very very useful but then I had the uh, avalanche drop in the dawning this year and I've taken that in this has also got incandescent and it's also solar so it's of a lot of use it's excellent and I could heartily recommend it. Then finally, let's have a look at the armor. Well, we've already looked at the Laurel Leaf Splendor helm, but I'll show you what I've got slotted in here. Because my uh, resilience is already bang on 100, I'm also increasing uh, my grenade rechargeability. So yes, I've got a discipline mod in there. I've gone for machine gun ammo finder, and then I've gone for melee well maker, because when I wallop people with my throwing hammer, they'll spit out two elemental wells, and I'll show you why in a moment. On the arms, I'm going with the health motif again with well of life. I've gone for submachine gun reloader, because I'm using a submachine gun, of course. Fastball, and then a resilience mod. On the chest, now I've gone for Font of Might, which makes my weapons a little bit more powerful. I believe it's 25% more powerful when I pick up a matching elemental well, which will help me out there. Then I've got for Linear Fusion Rifle Reserves, of course, for my Arbalist. I can't fit anything in this slot here, because number three here is for resilience, which is incredibly important. Then for the boots, I've gone for Bountiful Wells, of course, which means two wells where I get one, which is very useful. I've also stuck in here, you can put in what you like here, really, but for me, I've gone for my machine gun holster so it reloads my uh, avalanche when I'm not using it which is very very handy and then I've gone for another discipline mod there to stick up my grenades. Now for my class item I've stuck in solo operative which gives you a damage boost there when you're not in a fire team. A very very useful mod this season from the artifact. Perpetuation reduces your class ability cooldown when using your class ability and then I've finally gone for a resilience mod. Lovely. So I believe we're ready to go. Let's jump on in to the spire of the Watcher first encounter solo. So the Spire of the Watcher has the same mechanic all through it, really. You need to connect up nodes. You can see this cable that's running here on the left. You've got to basically connect all these nodes from one end to the other so it activates and completes a circuit. Now, this first section, it's quite ad-heavy, which is why we really need that survivability with the restoration. So bear that in mind that it can get a little bit overwhelming, but you've got plenty of places you can run for cover. And if you're using this build, plenty of times you can instigate restoration restoration to save your ass. So here we are, you can see we've got four buildings, and now once we kill this goblin here, we start the ball rolling, and the Minotaurs, who drop the buffs, that's called Arctrician, will spawn. There we go, there we can see one there. So once he's killed, look, he'll spawn a little pool there. You want to run into the pool, and you can see it says Arctrician, 30 seconds, and it counts down from 30 to 0. So we're going into this building first on the right. Now this one's quite easy to follow, actually. You want to go in here, and there's these uh, gen Generators that you want to shoot to start it off. No need to run all the way up. Look, we've shot the first one. Pile on back in. Now you can hear the enemies mulling about in the corridor as well. So don't be frightened to take your time to kill them out because you can always get the buff again whenever you need it. Sod off, goblin. There we go. There's another node there. Now then, you don't have to run out to get the other node for, for this. Look, you can actually run, stay inside the building so you're staying in cover. Run up, shoot the node there. That connects back around and then you can shoot the final node in here. There we go. That's it. Circuit number one done. Sorry, it's that one on the right there. Now then, once we've done that one, nice in cover, we're going to run out now and get our asses shot off. But what we're doing is the node, one of them is mounted on the side of a building. And I'm taking this time to uh, kill these bloody cyclopses because those are the things that generally kill me all the time. And also the supplicants, those are the harpies that come screaming at you and then explode like gits. So I'm triggering off my uh, little bit of restoration here as well. I'm going to get me buff from that uh, minotaur. Okay, so here we go. 
So we're going to shoot the first node. Here we go there. And get me a submachine gun out. And then we're going to follow this one round. Now we're running right to the end this time. And we're going to go into a building which is at the end. Which is where the second node is. Here we go. There it is. It's on the building rather. So that second node activated. Running around into this little hatch here. This is the third node. Shoot that baby here. And then that's the last but one. So the last one we need to go back to the four points at the end. Sod off harpies. Shoot them in face before they kill you. See that cyclops up there. There we go. And shoot and node activated. Splendid. Don't forget to run in and have a bit of a breather. Little bit sweaty this. So now we're going to go to the one which is underground. But I've got to get another buff here because I've only got five seconds left. So let's get the buff from the older Minotaur here. It's quite easy to get confused as well when you get kickings like this. Bloody hell, it's unbelievable. Look, I'm surrounded by goblins. So if you ever do get confused, go back to where it starts and then trace the uh, pipe from there. So here we go. I'm tracing the pipe now. It's going to take us into this building here on the left. And this one's going to take us underground. So you want to drop down the shaft. Kill any gits you might have who might sort of lay in wait for you when you come out because they're complete gits like that. Did I say gits? Yes, gits. Here we are. Here's the first node. Shoot that one and up we go. And up through the hole again we go. So next we're going to shoot uh, that node there and there's another one inside too which is just behind this... Uh, Palaver in the wall. How are we doing? Oh, we've only got five left on the Arctrician. Gone back up to nine. There we go. Twelve. Because every time you shoot a node, you get an extra three or four seconds. There's one on the outside here. And then we're just going to run round and we'll be able to shoot the last one with ten seconds to go. Not the last one, the last node. Right, there's one left. Now this one is up on the roof. So you want to run up onto the roof here on the right and go to the end shack. Now what I find when I come up here, like I've started there, like these supplicants coming in to kill me straight away, I've chucked me super off there, no worries, try and get myself saved. Don't forget as well, you've got those bloody cyclopses shooting and they're a huge pain in the bum. Okay, first node is sure on the right, look, bit of a struggle there, but there we go, I've completely missed it because my Arctrician is gone. This always happens, plus I got completely overwhelmed by supplicants there, so I'm run, running around the side here now. Killing any, look there they are, Cyclopses, take them down, they're a huge pain in the bum. What we're looking for is a Minotaur. Let's hit them with a bit of a hammerage so I can get some health and some lovely elemental wells. Here we go, we've got our uh, Minotaur there using the super heavy doodah, going through the buff, and there we go, 30 seconds. So now, we've got to jump back up here. Yes, I kind of should have gone around the other way, really, but never mind, so there we are, more harpies. Die harpies. Alright, die harpies. Not die hard. Okay, let's click that one. There we go. One shot there. Now we're getting, ooh, gonna get slightly confused here now because I wanted to shoot that one but I've missed one out because it drops down to the bottom. Look here. And we can see it. It's just lodged there. There we go. Shoots with a Minotaur and we've managed to activate it. Great stuff. Ten seconds left on the Arctrician. Not too bad. Run into the garage for a bit of hiding I'm doing here. There we go. Node is hit. Now I think I'm going to run out here if memory serves because I'm doing this in retrospective mode because uh, it's quite difficult to talk and do this bit at the same time. There we go. There's another one there and I've just lost the buff again. So down we go. Go and get another Minotaur buff and then come back up and finish it off. It's not too hard after you've done that though. This is the last one. Pretty quick. Just stay alive. There we go. Oh, I'm missing badly because I'm panicking here. There we go. And boom. Gone. Grab the the whiff. The buff. Yes. Get the buff. Switch to my uh, submachine gun because it's easier. Hit them with the hammer and it didn't do bugger all. Bloody hell. That's close. Okay. Shoot that node. Now we're active. I mean all we need to do is drop down and shoot the final one there. Missed on the way down and ugh, did it. There we go. All four nodes shot. So, that's done. Now, next, we've got this door that's opened here. Now, I die here quite frequently, but don't panic if you do die here, because you just reset to this part. So, what you're going to do is run, come down here, and then time your jump at the end. Now, you will die if you just go splat at the bottom. So, once you miss it, and then just go... Ugh. Oh, there see, I did it wrong. Nice for you. I did that so I could show you. I'm getting frustrated now. Let's try it again. Right, did it just, did a right pig's ear of that as well. But there we go, Sunspot helped. Now then, in this section here, you do have a, one of the terminals if you're looking to get the, to collect all the messages for the, um, for the Triumph. So there's one message here. Look, so make sure you pick that baby up. And then we're going to continue up and out. We're going up over there, yes. Now the next section we got is a bit of a runny, jumpy bit. 
Now, like I said, I've got my lion rampants as well, which help me with the jumping section. So I do change my trousers on and off here to make it easier for myself. I'm not one of these speedrunners, as you might tell, but this is a nice way to farm. And believe me, the more you do this, the easier it becomes, solely because you realise that you've all you got to do is shoot the circuits uh, rather than, you know, um, killing every git. Okay, once you come to this part here with the white light, you've got two possible ways to go. You want to go left. Not right, left. Yes, not left, right, right, left. It's quite a... Get through here, then we'll drop down. Yes, here we are. Drop down and then drop down again. And uh, here we are again. Now then, we've got all these little entryways. And it's the middle red one that you want. Which will take... Got a little opening doorway there. And we're out here. And then you've got new objectives. This is a checkpoint for you. Now, there's nothing much here in this part. Uh, there's nothing to uh, have a little look at. Actually, I mean, completely incorrect. Come here and go under the gantries, and there is another collectible. So make sure you do that as well. This is for the sake of completion, of course, yes. Right, there we are, got our collectible, and now we're going to make our way up and out to a bit of a runny, jumpy, puzzly bit. Yes. So what I tend to do here is I flick out uh, my machine gun, my submachine gun, for my uh, staccato there, which has got a nice bit of range on it. And then we're going to make our way across the various bits and bobs. Now then. We want to jump up onto this ridge here. Yes, hello, ridge. And then up to this one here. And up to this one here. Uh, there we go. We're making our way right to the top, basically. Up there we go again. And one final jump up through the middle here. And here we are. Now, I've still got my Laurel Lee Splendor helm on because I want to just make sure I don't get killed too easily because you've got a few things to shoot here. There we go. There's the Hobgoblin. We'll jump across. Now, what we're going to get here are harpies, and we're also going to get a quantum hydra. And these do turn up quite a bit here and there. But before we do that, we've got to kick them in by killing these goblins down the bottom. Your hobgoblins, rather. He'll pop his shield, because that, that other one's been killed. He's very irritating. You might not be able to kill this one just before they turn up. There we are, we did. Okay, we have harpies now, so we just need to take these guys out. I find the auto-fire on the scout rifle setting very, very useful. So take out as many of these guys as you can. Don't be afraid to use a healing grenade if you need to. You've also got some who appear behind you there. And then you might start seeing more of heavy fire. That means your quantum harp is here. So get your arbalist out. Shoot through the shields because you don't need to worry about shields with the arbalist. Excellent. That's that done. I tend to save my arbalist shots though for big bosses. Right. So that's everyone killed here. Now I'm going to change my trousers. So let's uh, stick my helmet on here and stick my jumping trousers on. There we are. Lovely. And now we're going to start our jumping shenanigans. So down here, first of all. Okay. And then we're going to make our way across these gantries all the way over to there. So first things first, shoot any harpies who are shooting you in the face because they're complete arse pipes. And then start your jumping. Take it easy. Uh, see, it's I'm so used to it with Warlock, not with Titan. But Titan's got lovely survivability. So... That is what's useful in this for me, really. I can cope with the jumping if I've got my lion rampant on. Yes. Right. Uh, there we are. Now we're going to get another wave of gits. So make sure you take them out. Uh, prioritize your targets because they're too swoop in here. Like that. So make sure you shoot the ones who are a bit closer to you, first of all. Don't want them blowing you off. Ooh, uh. Have you noticed the harpies have got two fire modes? Like they've got the rapid fire solar cannons and they've got the long range sniper void cannons as well. The quantum harpies. They're very, very annoying. I'm sure we've got one left. You're just hiding behind there. Perhaps we haven't. Right, okay. We can continue our jumping. There goes a blue engram. Right, onto this platform now. There we go. And boop. Right, next, we're going to jump over onto that shelf there. Don't panic. It looks really far, but it's not too bad. Just take your time. Hit the wall. There we go. Woof! Nearly didn't make that then. Now we're going to go around onto this bit here. Yes. And then we're going to go up here. Now, this is the point where you're going to start seeing harpies turning up. But I like to change back to my Lordly Splendor Helm. Because we've got a bit of fighting to do here. And uh, it kicks off our chain of survivability. So just change back here. And then we'll just go up one up and then up again there you go they're gonna spawn in now so make sure you take these guys out first and foremost We've got hobgoblins again oh no he's gonna pop his shield first see no he's not and he'll pop his shield there here come the harpies just take them all out really you can use the consoles for cover actually so you don't get any uh, fire from the other side of the room which is quite handy 
Yes, hello, harpies. I mean, this bit is... I'm going to say it's not too difficult. I'm going to die here. Now, there they are. There's their close range fire, look. Keep on forgetting I've got auto fire on the bloody thing. Lovely. Ooh, yes, lovely. Good. Right, let's just finish them off. And, of course, we've got our friendly neighbourhood quantum harpy. Don't panic, Mr. Mannering. Just, uh... Take out the minions as much as you can. We've got lovely sunspots coming there as well from the incandescent uh, wallops that I'm dishing out. And then what I would do, change the arbalist, reload, you silly boy. And I'd take him out through the shields because they don't half hit you hard. Ooh, and right, gone. Excellent. Finish them off now. Yes, nice. Lovely, 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 lovely. And just the older hobgoblin who's bound to put his shield up. There he goes. Take him out. Goodbye, Mr. Hobgoblin. Right, next, we've got a bit of jumping to do here now. But, because you can see just a shelf there, I've got to change back to my uh, jumping trousers. I'm not risking it. So, uh, we go here, and then jumping trousers back on. And then, it's not too bad, actually. You're just kind of jumping around here. You can probably do it a lot easier on Hunter and Warlock. And then we're on to this little gantry here as well. And we've got another uh, collectible here, which is nice. Let's have a listen to that. And then as we're going through here, this is where secret chest number one is. I've already completed this today, so you won't get items from the secret chest again and again. You can't farm the secret chests, only the actual encounter chests. So I'll open this and I'll get bugger all from it. But I did have a set of arms from it as well earlier on. So we're going to make our way back now to the other part of the room. That was lucky. I nearly buggered that up completely. Jump across here. So we want to go back the way we came. So around to the little shelf on the side here. Yes, there we are. Shelf number one. And then over here to the shelf here. Now we're going to be making our way all the way over there and around down to the bottom there. What's interesting about this bit, we're going to jump across here. Once we land at the back there, another quantum hydra type idiot will appear. So I'm just going to pop my super as soon as I land just to kick their face in. Yes. So... Up here we go. Now, I have checked all these up here, and I can't see any collectibles up here. But you can see... Look, let me just show you while I'm up here. You can see uh, a collectible which is over there. Where is it? Oh, I've gone too. I'll show you when I get to the bottom. Hang on. Wait a minute. We'll just jump down here. There we go. And we're across here. Now then... Ooh, bloody hell. There we are. You can see the collectible just over to the left there. Look. I'm not going to jump over there, but it's over there. And you get to it from the bottom part. So let me just jump down here. And this is where the uh, quantum harpy is going to come in. There it is. I just hit my super here because you don't want to risk it for a biscuit, do you really? What's the point in risking it? Your your uh, super will be charged up again by the time you reach the next part of this encounter. Goodbye, harpy. I'm sure there's one left there. At least they're not supplicants, yes. So, you want to jump from here over to there to go and get the collectible. It's quite a long jump, so make sure you've got it ready, but I'm not risking it uh, for the walkthrough. Right. Now we're going to go up into the ceiling. Here we go. So this first room, we get a little bit of dialogue here from uh, Osiris, I believe. Oh, no, that's up on the next bit. Oh, yeah, here we go. So we, the way we come down, we come down here. There's nothing to uh, look at here. You just want to go up the steps, and we're going straight out the other end of the room. And then we're continuing to jump on up the platforms here. So I always find these a bit tricky for some stupid reason. There we go. I haven't got my uh, lion ramparts on here, I don't think. No, I mean, I have got them on, rather. Or have a couple. I did remember. Anyway, we're still doing jumping, so before it starts, I shall make sure I've got the correct thing on. Here we go. Drop down into the spire area here. Now then, we do have a collectible here, which is over on this side. Let me show you. It is there on the old monitor. So this is going to be a checkpoint. So make sure you've got some raid banners that you want to use, and uh, make sure you put on any weapons that you want. Now I'm going to change back to my uh, this here, and I'm going to keep my avalanche on as well. Right, so here we go. We've got the raid banner in. Ooh, look, there's an Edengram plummeting to the ground, the just one I lost earlier. So we're up onto this platform here, and then jumping up to this platform here, and then we're up to the main bit. And there's lots of these structures hanging off that you're going to be hanging off of, which is a bit scary. But what we've got 
got to do basically, as always, is complete the circuits. So we need to find the start point for each of the circuit. And on this first level, it's in this place here where this uh, Minotaur is on the Gettin Tree, which is very handy. So we can kill him, get our Arctrician buff, and then we'll go with this one here on the left and follow it around. So you want to shoot the first node. The second one is underneath that flap there. Then you're going to start getting things spawning in pretty much straight away. Come down the steps. There's the third node there. And then the fourth one, I was just underneath the gantry where all these guys are. So at this time, you're probably best off trying to thin the herd out a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to find it incredibly difficult and you're going to get killed pretty much straight away. We also have a Hydra across the way there. So look, we've taken some cover and I've shot the one under the gantry there. We're going to carry on. I'm going to ignore that Hydra for a little while. And who's shooting us up the arse? But never mind. Here we go on to the next one. And it's just underneath the stairwell there. And now we're on to the opposite side, basically. And you can see there are these large transformers. Not that kind, but there. Right, we need to go and complete the second circuit up here now. So we're going to go around to the place uh, where we started with that Minotaur spawned in. I've only got five seconds left on my Arctrician there as well. So we're probably going to have to get another one of those before we start complete the next circuit. More goblins. Lovely elemental wells there giving us some extra bits and doodars and healing. There we go. We've killed uh, the Minotaur. So now we need to run around to the opposite side. Bearing in mind, of course, you might get shot up the backside by Hydras. But we're okay. And here is the platform where we need to be. And there's another the Minotaur there for us. Take him out nice and easy. There we go. And start the circuit. Now we're following this one around to the right. This one's not too bad. I do find though, like I say, we're going to take him out. We're going to get this node here first on the right there. And then we're going to keep on following it around. Shoot up and look up on that one. Then all we need to do is jump across to the other side and look up and shoot the second one there as well. And then I think we're really close to finishing this first level here. So we've got one just in the ground between these stairs there. And then finally jump up onto the main gantry and the lift will activate in between these two generators. That's it. That's level one done. Up we go to level two. Now, this is the same again, of course. Uh, we've got to complete two circuits to get up to the third and final level. Now, you can identify where they start because they've got this electricity kind of short circuity thing going on. So you start the nodes from there and follow them around to the other short circuity thing on the opposite side of the building. If you see what I mean. So, of course, being the first part of the level, we need to get a Minotaur. And here we go. Here's the Minotaur. And you can see as well where the circuits are going to start. So let's get the Arctrician from here. In. There we go, and we shall start our run then once we've killed off these little goblins. There we go. So there's number one. Follow it around up to the side. Now this one, you can see the next node is on top of the gantry here. And the next node is underneath. So, but I'm jumping over onto the wrong one here. Look, I've forgotten, you see. It's not here, because I shoot this one by mistake first. It's not that one. We've got to jump over to the other side there. So you can just see it on the other side of the uh, of the tower structure, across the gap, and shoot through the hole in the ground. That's where it is there. There we go. That's the uh, next one. And then we'll go to that one I accidentally shot by mistake. So jump back onto the gantry. Got slightly confused, and then I went, oh, yes, I remember. It's over there. So there we go. There's the next one. Continue you on. Now we've got a Hydra here, so take him out. Arbalest is incredibly important in this. It really did help me out so much, so I do recommend you bring it along for the uh, long-range kills of these bloody Hydras. There we go. Okay, there's another node there in the opposite part of the electricity, and we are finally at the end terminator for that circuit. So we've got to go and do the next circuit now, so we can see supplicants coming here as well. You do have to be careful of those bloody supplicants. They're a huge pain in the bum. So we're making our way back around to the other side now, which is where the start of the circuit is. We don't have any Arctrician either, so we're going to have to get a Minotaur at some point to uh, get our buff back. Ah, oh, there we are. Here they come, being nice and uh, helpful. Yes. Chuck a healing grenade down, so incredibly useful in a pinch. And of course, get your super popped when you feel like you're being overwhelmed. Which you can do quite a lot on these levels by the goblins and the supplicants and the Minotaurs. It can be a bit stressful, so always in a last ditch minute of uh, emergency See, poo your pantsness, whip out your super, and get going. Right, okay, it's time to start the circuit. So I've shot that one here, but immediately I've headed off to the wrong node straight away. I have missed one. Because you can see I'm trying to shoot this one under the hood here, which shoots up, but, the, but it doesn't light up. So what I've forgotten is the one that's immediately next to it. But you have to jump over to this platform to get it. So a nice way to remember this one. Jump over to the platform, and there's the connector there, which is excellent. So I've activated that. Now we may as well kill this uh, Minotaur as we're waiting. Go on, sod off, Minotaur. Punch him in the face. 
Okay, we're a nice little finisher on him there. Okay, and we got a reset of the buff as well, which is nice. Now then, we need to get the node like I just showed you earlier, which is underneath that little hood there. My god, so many, so many enemies up here. This is one the survivability is just vital. If your skill is not sufficient like mine is, you need that little edge with the survivability. And only the Titan can give you that, I'm afraid. Okay, here's the next node, shot and activated. Okay, we're going to run along here now. And uh, the next node we're going to have is right next to us there on the left. And the other one is in the uh, cover of the electricity bit. And this is the final one. So it's not too bad, you see. You shouldn't get caught up in being overwhelmed like I did there. There we go. Floor two done. Now we're on to floor three. Now when we pop up here on the third floor, the first thing you're going to notice is a Minotaur trying to kill you immediately. I don't know why, but it bugs out quite a lot, this Minotaur does. But I've had the Arctrician from downstairs already, so I didn't get the buff from that Minotaur. But anyway, we'll see how far we get here. So uh, I've shot the first node there. Here's the second one on the left. I've only got 15 seconds of the node left here, but we'll see how we go. Not node, I mean buff. And we're following it around. Now the next one is on that platform there, so we need to jump out onto that platform. I'm going to get killed by lots of goblins. Now, I'm just running out of my buff. I managed to shoot the last node there, but then I have to wait around ages for a minotaur to spawn in. So there's a cut here where I wait for the minotaur to come in. There he is. Look, right, he's finally arrived. I'm going to get my buff and we'll carry on completing the circuit. Standing in the buff zone and then the next one we want is up to the right underneath the flap in the corner there. So here we go. There's that one there. We shoot that one. Now we've got a bloody hydra pummeling us as usual, but I'm going to take some... Uh, Ooh, wow, we're okay, we're okay. I thought you were going to punch me off then. So what we want to do is uh, do the one that's up there. You can see it just under the lip. Good, there we go. Keep on going around. Like I say, run away from them if you can. You don't have to stay here around fighting them all the time. Now, this is the where it ends for this particular circuit. So we're really there. Now, all we need to do is clear out some of the enemies so I don't get killed. Plus, get some nice buffs while doing it as well. And then we've got the second one to complete. Now, uh, once we shoot these guys up, we're going to spin around. There we go. And we'll take out the node. Now, the second one, it starts kind of halfway around. They don't start in the same place the other, like the others did. So you have to be careful of that. Plus the supplicants as well piling into us. And look, we've got a Hydra. Take that baby out or it'll kill you. If you've got an opportunity to take it out, take it out. I highly recommend it. Uh, <laughs> Turn my super on there because I panicked, I'd imagine, yes. So there we go. Let's uh, kill all the gittage there. Lovely stuff. Pick up some lovely health. We've got no buff here either. So we're going to go and have to find a Minotaur as well. And I believe there's one hiding around the corners here. Yes. Okay, so there's the Minotaur. We've got the buff. And here is the start of the second circuit. Now then, we've got to follow this one around here. So we're going to jump across. And the next part we've got, I believe, it's just kind of, it's quite a long one. So you've got the connector there. And then this one then goes all the way off over to the side there. You can see it just off to the right. I'm going to get my buff again, although I don't need it solely because I'm just trying to protect myself. Because you can fall down the gaps so easily. It's unbelievably irritating, this. I think this is like the sixth time I've attempted it. But you've got to do it all in one go. So I have gone from beginning to end completely on this run. Sorting them all out here. You can see the next node we need to shoot just there. I'm going to redo my buff as well, just in case. The belts and braces, as they say. And then we can shoot this then from this distance here. But I'm not in any rush because I'll be killed by that Hydra. If he's got a bead on you, make sure you take it out. And of course, one shot in the uh, in, in the precision area will give it a bit of flinch, which gives you a breather in the attacks. There we go. It's dead. Shoot the next node. Down we go. There, that's lovely. Now we need to pop back down here and follow the next one around. Ooh. Jumping onto the platform, picking up some bits and bobs. It's underneath that flap there again. So there's that one there on the flap. Let's jump around now to the end. We might have another Minotaur in our faces here because they usually do. There we are. They're always tucked away, look. And it's probably worth doing because, of course, I've lost my uh, Arctrician and I haven't realised. Look, there's the next node. And that kind of thing happens all the time. You think, bloody hell, I haven't got my Arctrician boost. Don't worry, there's usually a Minotaur somewhere close. Okay, so there's that node there. And then we're going to jump around here now. And I believe we are very close to the completion of this. In fact, that is the last node there. So I'm going to clear the decks down here before I jump down so I don't risk dying. Those supplicants, you've got to wait for the tail tail. Diggly, 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 and then you know they're really close to you. And you might find yourself jumping around like an ass. There we go. Circuit complete. Brilliant. Lift on. And there is your farmable chest. 
Now, so far, I've had two sets of arms, and I've had the machine gun as well, so I'm going to be running this until I get my lovely cowboy hat and the long-arm scout rifle, which looks bloody marvellous. Well, there we go. That's how you can farm that counter solo. Bit of an extensive video, but it gives you a good breakdown of exactly what to expect and what to do. If you did like the vid, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe. That would be utterly fantastic. And hit the notification bell as well, so you know the next time I splap one out. Thank you so much for watching, and I shall speak to you all again very soon. So, Sarge, it.